So, um, how Got is it. it in um Denmark? It's springtime, you know. I can and tell. That's nice. Uh, you can see we're sitting. I'm sitting outside. We have a very big. What do you call that in uh, English? I don't know. We call it orangery. It's like 90 square meters. Glass, whatever, you know. So this is like uh, outside the house. And it's very nice now because the sun is shining in. And it's almost 25, 30 degrees. But outside is pretty cold. So this yeah. is our home now. In the in the springtime, in the summer it's too hot, but now it's wonderful. Yo, like I always want to like go to Europe and stuff because it always looks so beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is very nice. You should come one day. Oh, well, for sure, especially when I retire at fifty-five. You retire at fifty-five? Yep. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Huh? Yeah. So, what is, what is this all about? You want to hear some stories about cartoons? Yep. I have the first, I have the questions already. Okay. Let's go, John. All right. Question one. What was the mainstream music scene growing up in Denmark? When I was young or now? Um, you could say when you were young because this is the beginning of cartoons. Uh, well, uh, the dance scene wasn't happening when I was young. It came in the 90s. When I was young, which is like 150 years ago, it was, uh, you know, the Swedish band ABBA? Yeah, I've they heard of were, that. Yeah, the, all through the 80s, late 70s and the 80s, they were all over. They were so big, and I loved that band. And uh, yeah. and then in the start 90s, the, the dance scene started to happen. So... Um, but for me, in the start, it was ABBA. Yeah, the yeah, great band, great and, band. And yeah. I might also say a little bit of Frank Zappa, because my big brother loved Frank Zappa. Yeah, so that was very diff different. <laughs> yeah, true. A great innovator in music. That's still um, that's God. still. That still gets influenced and had an influence on the dance music scene. Extremely, extremely. He was like a big, big uh, composer, musician, and everything. Big influence on everybody. Yep. Amen. And <laughs> question two, what made you want to be a musician? I can't say money, right? Yes, you can. <laughs> I can say girls then. Yeah. No, um, actually, I was uh, heading out for being a mechanic. Uh, it's a long story. I'll do it short. And then my buddy, when I was 16, I had played saxophone uh, when I was 10 years old and stopped that when I was 16 and wanted to be an auto mechanic. And then my good buddy, he played me a tape. Uh, cassette tape at those days with an American saxophone player called Michael Brecker. And I heard that was called the Brecker Brothers, uh, heavy metal bebop. And I was just floored, you know, I sat in the car for one hour and said, what the hell is this? How can you play like that? Okay, forget about mechanic. I'm going to, I'm going to continue. I'm going to be a musician. So that's how it started for me. I just went straight home put out my saxophone, started it off, and rehearsed uh, 10 hours a day for the next three years. That's really an awesome story. And it's true. And I'm still a big fan of him. He died, sadly, for 16 years ago or something like that. But he was a big influence for me. So that's really why I started with the music instead of going the other way, because I wanted to play like him and sound like him. and. He just grabbed me by the, you know, balls. 
That's yeah. how it started. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, question three: How did the um, the band form? The cartoons actually came out of another band before that, which was called the Scooters. And that was a uh, genuine rockabilly show band, rock and roll, rockabilly. You know, yeah. Bill Haley, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, all those yep. guys. And we dressed up in dark suits and pink shirts. And we had Elvis wigs on. And the lead singer used to come in on his old Vespa scooter, which was also pink, and drove up to the States. And um, he was crazy about Elvis. And we played with that band for uh, eight or 10 years. And then uh, that was around 95, 96. And we, we thought, me, Martin and, uh, and me, Martin was the lead singer. We, we had a meeting and we said, well, we can keep on doing this for the next 50 years, but it would only go this far. Because it's uh, like it's it's cover music and it's it's rockabilly rock and roll, so it will never be bigger. And that was just when the dance scene really took on. You know, we had a what was her name, Danish singer Wickfield with Saturday Night. I think that was eighty six or yeah. eighty five. And uh, right after that, Aqua came out with uh, Barbie Girl, oh. and we thought to ourselves, why don't we try to mix? The rockabilly to warp thing from the 50s with the dance music of the 90s. So that's actually how it started. Uh, you know, so we started making demos uh, and uh, we made some funny songs and we made it like the modern bottom, you know, with the bass drum and the hi hat. And then we had slap bass and uh, you know acoustic slap bass and the guitar from the scooters and my saxophone and a lot of doo-wop so we tried to mix the 50s with the 90s we called it techno billy yeah then, we just, then it just took off you know because we had a lot of fun and we started to uh, design a wig uh, we made drawings of the clothes and we make a demo and we got the wig, and then we started to see if we could get a record uh, deal. So we went around to all the Danish record companies, and uh, five out of eight said, yeah, we'll do it. And then we ended up doing it with the, the EMI company. So that's how it started. Crazy stuff. Oh, that's, a that's an awesome story. And... um. You just answered um, you just answered three questions in a one answer because the other questions were um, what got you interested in rockabilly and what got inspired you guys to go from scooters to cartoons. So I'm skipping to question six now. Yeah. What yeah, was okay. what was it like hitting a big ass cartoon? tunes in the euro dance craze of the 90s that was awesome i mean uh, we didn't see that coming uh, we didn't expect it at all we just thought maybe we could make a record and we can play denmark and uh, that would be fun maybe have a radio hit but and we actually designed this for the kids no we actually designed it for that's a lot we designed it for 18 to 25 year olds going out. We want to have a party band. Uh, but again, it's a long story, but I'll make it short. In the Danish uh, department of the EMI, they uh, played our first single called Duda at a meeting at the headquarters in Lon London. And every year the big companies, they, uh, make a priority of artists and they pick two and make them eight priorities and then you have all the other priorities but a is the top of the line and they have two and they spend all their money so the director from denmark he went to the headquarter in london and he played this duda and we had the wakes on and funny clothes and they just said this is so crazy we gotta do it so we got signed uh, to a, as an a priority together with robbie williams who was also on EMI. 
And then it just took off. They spent a lot of money. All the European divisions of EMI uh, was uh, obligated to spend a lot of money. And uh, we toured for, I think, almost two years in a row uh, around Europe in a tour bus driving 40,000 kilometers and no sleep and food. <laughs> so, and then it just took off. It was crazy. And it was a lot of fun. I must oh, say. for sure. Yeah. It definitely sounded like a blast. It was a blast. I mean, 98, 99, 2000. I can't even re remember the crazy. Yeah. Uh, Great really, year. That was a good, some good years. Yeah. Wow. That was fun to try. That was, uh, I would always treasure that memory. Yep. I agree. And question seven What was the makeup process like? Oh my God, why do you have to ask that question? <laughs> what do you mean makeup? Uh, what, what do you mean makeup or do you mean, because uh, we use a lot of makeup. <laughs> or you mean the creation of the band and the music? What do you mean? I mean, you know, the costumes and wigs and stuff, because that yeah. had to be like very like arduous and long. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, we, we we designed them ourselves and then we, we got some very professional people to make all the instruments which is actually real instruments but rebuild yeah uh, i mean the bass is a real acoustic bass is shaped like a carrot we also have one with the shape like a hammer and the the guitar the guitar is uh, a tune chester and my saxophone is like uh, a little car and the all the clothes were designed and the, the shoes were custom made and the wigs were custom made. So uh, that took a lot of time and a lot of people, but the outcome was fantastic. I mean, when people see us still, but back then they were just shocked. They say, what, what is going on here? I mean, they look like nothing we ever saw or seen. You know, so. Yeah, it has a great impact when people see us. For sure, and it was money well spent. I think so. I don't know how we would have made it without this uh, outfit. I mean, one thing is to have the music, but if you can add on yeah. something extra like this and look quite unique, you get like a, you know, head start. Yeah, for yeah. sure, and yeah. um. Question eight, what is the most song for you to perform with the cartoons band? Uh, well, that's hard to say because I love them all, you know, they're like yep. my children. But I I would say that for me, the most fun song is probably Duda. Yeah, I like the I like the vibe of it vibe and I like the there's a lot of saxophone, and when we play it live, uh, people just go bananas. I mean, they go crazy. It's so catchy and uh, straight ahead, uh, and a little bit rock and rolly. No. Yeah, I love playing that song. Uh, still, I I've played it two thousand times. I still love playing it. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like if if you were to perform that like a Bimani and Dance Mania tour. All the folks would go crazy because it's a fan favorite along with Witch Doctor. Yeah, Witch, Witch Doctor is actually was actually the biggest hit. And that, that came as a big surprise. We thought all, we all thought it would be Duda. Uh, and that was the first single, and that went uh, pretty good in Denmark. And then uh, Witch Doctor just uh, cleared the table and was the one who went sky high, I mean, went number two in England. and. You know, so uh, that's also a great catchy song, but still my yeah. favorite is Duda. Yeah. It's awesome. And speaking of Duda, how was that song created? Well, actually, you know, the, the original song, the, the chorus of the song is actually from a very, oh, it's very old. It's from the 18, 1850s. And I think it's, it's, it's a traditional, and it appeared in a, a, a movie uh, called Blazing Saddles. 
Mel yep. Brooks movie. Yeah. And it's Classic. called Came Town Ladies. Came Town Ladies sing the song. Do that. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we knew it actually before. Because uh, we, we we played around with it in in the scooters playing the rockabilly version of it, and I always thought it was a very catchy uh, chorus. So uh, yeah, so we worked on that, and then we just rewrote it, and we wrote some verse and a bridge, and we wrote a saxophone theme and melody, and so. Uh, but the the chorus is actually from eighteen fifties. Yeah, and it's a it's a classic chorus. It is. I mean, I thought I would think all Americans know it, maybe. No, yep. right. Oh yeah, and yeah. question ten: How was the classic witch doctor created? Uh, let me remember. But uh, that's actually also a cover song from um, the Chipmunks comic strip, the Chipmunks, and uh, we just heard it uh, one day. And it's it's from fifty six, nineteen fifty six, and it's from the same period. We just, you know, we we trawled down that lane of novelty songs, which it is called, you know, songs. Uh-huh. It doesn't mean anything. It's just happy, crazy songs, and uh, that just popped up. And we said, "So, so, wow, maybe, maybe we can do something." We had a lot of those uh, novelty songs, and uh, we worked with them all. And, and then Witch Doctor just came out great. So, uh, yeah, that's how we got it. Yep, and you guys made classic songs your own. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> you know, a lot of people think we wrote it. They get so disappointed when I'm, when I'm asked, ah, oh, just love your song, The Witch Doctor, dude, are they so fantastic? Well, you know what? We didn't write it. Yeah. What? Everybody thinks we wrote it, but we didn't. <laughs> we did some addition to it, but the original song is uh, what it is, you know? Yeah, at least the guys that wrote the originals are getting um, well paid royalties. I can tell you that uh, David Seville, who wrote that song, he died a long time ago, but his estate is pretty happy, I think. Yep. I think they are, they're living in a mansion, driving around uh, Ferraris, I hope. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Question 11. What was a memorable studio session from the cartoons? Because I can tell that you guys are professional but you guys had a lot of fun recording and stuff like that yeah you know most of the recording things is actually just hard work we're very dedicated so every day we meet at nine and we work till seven uh five nine to five that's a song actually yeah uh but i know you would ask this question so i just thought about it a while and actually, there was a funny story when we were doing promotion in Europe, uh, Germany. This time was Germany, and we were in Cologne, and there was a big uh, celebration meeting. Something I don't remember the the reason why, but uh, Michael Gorbachev was there. I we're talking '98, I think, and Gorbachev was there, and we met him. And he, we greeted him, and and he's like he's this tall. He's not that tall, and we are like yeah. two two meters twenty. So I was like bending down, saying, "Mr. Gorbachev." And then the next day, there was a big uh, exhibition of something, and Alan Parsons' project, which is a big English band at that time, they had a mobile recording studio, and they asked us, they did ask us in advance, and we would if we would record a song for this exhibition. It's like a world fair exhibition. And we made it. uh, And then we went into this mobile studio with our uh, clothes on, you know, the wigs and the shoes and sitting in there and Gopal Joff comes by and he sees us again and he's like, yesterday, (laughs) cartoons. (laughs) That was a funny uh, studio recording. So we did this with Alan Parsons, which is also a big hero of mine. So that was great to meet him, actually. 
that's that's an awesome story and uh question 12 what was your reaction to duda and witch doctor being in the video game dance dance revolution because i know radio play is important to you guys but to have your songs in a classic and fun video game like ddr it must have meant a lot to you guys you know uh john i have to be honest with you i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know about it you yeah. know because uh i know it's it's around a lot of places uh, but uh, yeah. first hand I, I don't play uh, video games but uh, i'm i'm sure it's great i mean uh yeah uh, but i didn't know about it so uh, yeah like i think it yeah europe the game is called dancing stage but that's how us american and japanese knew about cartoons okay all right really yeah. Yep. yeah you know what we were actually on the way to uh on the on the way to the u.s to do a tour do you know that story no i didn't okay it's a good one uh yeah. in 2001 we stopped the band because we were getting tired we've been touring for three years in europe so we wanted to quit then in the summer of 2001 we got a call from a, a company in, in America. I don't know, but I think Madonna was a part of it. And uh, at that time, Witch Doctor or Duda was number two at MTV. And they wanted us to do a one year tour in a, uh, what do you call this? Greyhound buses, something like yeah. that. Touring for one year in, in the US. And we thought, ah, oh, come on, no way, we're tired. Yeah, guys, yeah, you. Yeah. You've got to get a lot of money. And so we thought about it for a week or two and said, okay, we'll do it. And that's going to be it. Two weeks before we were supposed to fly, it was 9-11. Everything stopped at a second. So we never got to the States. We were supposed to be there for a whole year. And that would have yeah. been fantastic, I think. Yeah, I agree. Especially yeah. with your... um you found um cult following from the game dance dance revolution because that was the year duda and um witch doctor were included so that, that would been, uh, that would have been a great way to capitalize on your cult fame oh my god i hope we can do it sometime because i've never been to the u.s so i would really oh, love yeah to go, especially in new york oh my god that's a dream for me so let's see what happens maybe in this time. Oh, for right? sure. And um, question um, 14, 14, um, how does it feel for Witch Doctor to be this cult song that the Dance Dance Revolution love and still play to this day on the machines? How does it feel? Yep. Uh, it's, it's great. I think it's, it's, I love it. I love it. I mean, uh, it's great to uh, that it's still out there. And, uh, you know, we're we are playing in Denmark right now. We're doing a summer tour. And uh, I thought, well, why? Because nobody can remember the songs. And it's 25 years ago, but they can remember the songs. They know all the songs, all the lyrics, and they're singing it from the we get there to the leave. So it's still, it won't die. You know, yes. the song won't die, it's still alive. And uh, the more the merrier, the more platforms, uh, wherever. I mean, I, I, I just love, I'm, I'm very proud of it also. I think it's, it's, it's fantastic, so. All right, question um, for 15. Would you be down, would you and the cartoons gang be down to be a part of a uh, Bimani and Dance Mania tour? Wow, yeah. Any day, any time. Of course we would. That would be fantastic. Awesome. Be. Yeah. We love and to we love to play, you know, live. That's the best in the world. Yep. Especially fans that that grew up with your song in the video game DR. It would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. You just set it up and we'll be there. Oh, for <laughs> sure. 
Um, Paula <laughs> Terry, the singer from DDR, and Brenda Vaughn are down for it. So I will most certainly spread the word to promoters. Yeah, please do that. That would be great. That would be great. We'll come. We'll, we'll, we'll love to go. I mean, anytime, any day. We'll clear the calendar and we'll just go. Awesome. And um, <laughs> last question. Um, What's your favorite dance move? <laughs> My favorite dance move. Yeah. Awesome. Mine's... I don't know. I'm, I'm a really lousy dancer. That's Mine... why we have dancers in the band. <laughs> I can't dance. <laughs> Mine's... What about you? Yeah. Mine's the prep, miming, and the robot. <laughs> uh, the mime and the robot. Great. Yep. My man, um, I was inspired by my man Jeffrey Daniel from the band Shalomar because he's a great dancer. Really? Jeff Daniels? Wow. Yeah, okay. check out his um performance of uh, A Night to Remember from Top of the Pops because my man made history that night because he introduced Poppin' and Lockin' to the um, United Kingdom. Uh, okay. Gotta take that out. For sure. It was amazing talking to you and getting all the um, low down on cartoons. And yeah. and which yeah. doctor and Duda will live on forever? And that tour is going to be off the chain. <laughs> I got my fingers crossed. Great yeah. talking to you, Warren. Nice talking Great to talking you. Talking to you.